Hi everyone, welcome to Grow Roots. This is Shannon and this is the first day of May, the very first opportunity that I have to give you guys my May 2024 front yard garden tour. Oh my goodness, thank you for joining me. I feel like you are in for a treat and I cannot wait to talk about this front garden and all of the things and how things are growing. So I'm gonna start off right over here with my welcome sign and my goose. I call her Silly Goose. Um, <laughs> and so here we go. Okay, so over here, I want to just start off with the front border and uh, if you joined me earlier this season I planted these gosh one of my first plantings was this front border um, because as soon as I saw the supertunia vista jazzberry plants in um, Callaways I picked them up and I wanted to get them in the ground as soon as possible so that their roots could start growing and getting really strong and that they could have the best opportunity possible in the heat of our north Texas weather I am in north Texas on the border of zone 8a zone 8b and we get very 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 hot here and even supertunias which are heat tolerant even supertunias can succumb to uh, the heat of our summers but I'm trying to give these guys the best possible chance and so I planted these quite a while ago I have a video on that so please check that out and I've planted them up also with uh, this beautiful purple verbena and uh, actually some of this look at those oh my goodness just absolutely beautiful ver uh, purple colors they look a little bit more pink on camera they're a little more purple in person but they complement this super tunia jazzberry just so perfectly and these guys were just itty bitty little guys when they were planted and now they've probably doubled maybe tripled in size so I'm so happy about that um, don't mind these I they look a little crazy and I'm so tempted to go cut them off but these are my what's left of my daffodils and you see them all along this row here so if you're seeing that and thinking that it looks a little messy I think so too but uh, I have to let the leaves absorb as much sunlight as possible so that I can have daffodils again next year but this super junior jazzberry and this purple verbena are just growing absolutely beautifully together and I can't wait to see how much more they will grow um, right behind those I have Dusty Miller plants and I think that the white of the Dusty Miller just complements the really pink purpley colors so beautifully and the green of the foliage as well and I do have to keep these guys trimmed up they want to grow really really big these Dusty Millers so and I like them like that exact height I really just want them to barely be taller than the Super Junior Jazzberry and Verbena and be a nice white backdrop there so I really really am loving that um, I have like behind that is more of a cottage garden experience so this is definitely more formal my front border and then the the dusty miller and then I have the daffodils or what's left of the daffodils and my bird bath that's kind of the formal part of my front garden but behind that is way more of a cottage garden type of experience they're just uh plants everywhere and growing into each other and it's gonna be <laughs> quite amazing but the first one that I'll tell you about is this pinks dianthus look at that it's kind of just getting hidden by the maynite salvia by the dusty miller it's like this little peekaboo of pink color it's so cute and i love the blue foliage back there um and it's just really it was it was this color blue all through the winter so it definitely gives some winter interest and then now that it's you know late spring it's blooming pretty well and right behind that, you will find the May night salvia. I have a little uh, hedge of about three here, or I should say a little spray of three May night salvia. And I was a little bit bummed because I think I missed the bloom in the April tour. And then I'm kind of coming to the end of the bloom now that I'm in the first of May. But I actually have some new blooms coming 
right down there and they are just oh i love may night salvia i really do so that's looking really nice back there and now one of the stars of my garden right now it is sweet william and this is grown from seed and i just did not ever imagine that the sweet william could be this spectacular i mean these are like giant mop heads almost like hydrangea mop heads of the most beautiful pink blooms and then look the may night salvia is starting to grow into it as well and I mean, these have been blooming like this for two to three weeks straight. Probably more like three weeks or even longer, to be honest. And they are probably three feet tall here. And just, I did a, a whole video on Sweet William because I have some more in my backyard. I am just absolutely loving them. And I will be probably forever growing these because they're such a showstopper in my garden. I mean, just look at that with the super beet, super tunia, vista, jazzberry, the verbena, and then that uh, sweet William right there with the mayonite salvia next to it. And then coming next to it, I have these day lilies and I do not remember the name. They are this really, really pretty corally color and um, they're just really, really pretty. And look at that mixing with the sweet William too. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous. Right next to that, I have another Maynite Salvia. It's not as big. And of course, you know, these daffodils. Woo! Okay, so there's the Maynite Salvia, kind of a little one there. Actually, there's two, um, so that's neat. Um, right behind that, you're going to see uh, Salvia Greggy. It's kind of a reddish, hot pink color. It's really, really pretty. It uh, withstands our heat really, really, really well and uh, very drought tolerant, heat tolerant, which is why I added it because our summers are getting so, so hot. I need a lot of um, Texas native heat tolerant, drought tolerant plants. So that's what that is. So coming up on the side of the, um, the front garden, here's again that May night salvia that you see. I have some lemon coral sedum that is just coming out of flower right here. I absolutely love it. It is evergreen through the winter and I just want more and more of this for my garden for sure. I've got dianthus that just, it's your, I think it's Chinese pinks is the annual variety of dianthus here that's still going strong. I actually still have a daisy, uh, a pansy I mean. Um, can't believe these guys are still, look at how pretty, I just love Pansy so much. Okay, so he's going to stay here. I have more Dianthus there. And right here, I actually picked up a Superbina Sparkling Amethyst at Walmart. It was like $5 and 60 cents, something like that. So I picked that up. It is not in flower right now, but I think it'll be right there, right It'll be really pretty right there because it's right next to my welcome sign. So loving this May night salvia again. And then I just talked about the salvia greggy that's right there. Oh, right here is a volunteer rude beckia that's actually about to flower. How cool is that? I found three of them actually when I was planting the front border. And so I transplanted them one right there one right there and one over there i'll show it to you but um those are going to be a nice pop of yellow color which i don't have a whole lot of yellow flowers this year but i do have this huge head yellow sunshine ligustrum so the sunshine ligustrum actually took a little bit of winter damage um i didn't see it initially and I have been waiting for it to recover and there are some bare spots as you can see right there. I've trimmed those back and you're starting to see like all of the new growth kind of coming back. But yeah, there's like just this one long line all the way across right there of what I can only say is winter damage because we had one cold spell that went all the way down to zone seven temperatures and a lot of the sunshine ligustrum everywhere throughout the neighborhood was pretty damaged. I'm actually pretty lucky 
just to see the little bit of damage that I saw right there. Many sunshine ligustrums were just almost completely defoliated and are struggling to come back this spring. So it's okay. It's going to do just fine. I really do think it'll do just fine. If it doesn't, I'm kind of thinking because that right there is the line and underneath is where it's struggling. I'm kind of thinking about tree forming them all, maybe. Um, and, it, you know, stripping down all of the lower foliage so that all you see are just these lollipops on top. I'm unsure about that. So let me know in the comments below what you think that would that might be like. It would open up a whole new garden space underneath there for shade plants, which I think would be really fun. But um, we'll have to see. So anyway, moving right along, trying to get back into the garden. Uh, but there's another uh, volunteer rudbeckia. This is another daylily that I have never seen bloom before. I forget the specific variety, but it's like a reddish, yellowish variety there. Um, my bird bath. This right here is not flowering yet. And then planted my balloon flower here. And I never imagined that the balloon flower would get this big. It's like more than three feet tall now this little guy um yeah and so it's not flowering yet but balloon flower is one of the most spectacular blue flowers that you would ever see i absolutely love it i grew it from seed last year and it was i actually had it at the very end of the season it was up here but it at the beginning of the season it was in my backyard like it's been transplanted all kinds of times and look at it it's just thriving i really think it likes this spot it's been in a pot until then and so it was once i put it in the ground it was like woohoo i'm gonna explode and it sure did and it's kind of covering this dusty miller too um next to it is uh day lilies these guys have not quite flowered yet but these are the same as right here that peach color so I have that repeated right there. And then I've got another Salvia Greggy back there. You see the hot pink blooms, the reddish blooms. And then this is actually another Salvia that's trying to go into <laughs> the Dusty Miller. But that is um, hot trumpet Salvia. Isn't that cool? Like it's a smaller plant for sure, but the blooms are much taller. So tall that it's kind of, um, it's floppy and so we'll see oh you can see the end of one of those as well and this is another look at the damage that the sunshine ligustrum took as well now you can kind of see why i'm thinking about just trimming all of that down there just trimming all that off so that it's just brand new but who knows i'm not sure about that yet um i have some more mayonite salvia growing back there and right there and then i have my my garden sheep this is lambo <laughs> he is just so sweet i just love him so much he's moved throughout uh the seasons as well but i think he's gonna be happy right here under my vitex tree so let me back up a little bit and you can see my vitex tree there it is it's grown ginormously i think this is just its third season um if I have a picture of it when it was a baby, I'm going to pop it up on the screen. But it was just so little and it's grown so fast, so quickly. And if you look, we are already setting blooms. Let's see if I could get it to focus. Come on. But um, yeah, these probably won't bloom until, well, last year they didn't bloom until June. I thought I was going to have Mother's Day blooms, but that didn't happen last year. So yeah, it'll be June before these guys bloom, but so, so pretty. I love the purple blooms of the Vitex. I have some ground cover going on under here that I love. Last year, I really tried to amp up my ground cover game. And so I planted Burgundy Glow Ajuga right down here. And I planted a variegated Vinca Major right here. Now, the variegated Vinca Major, y'all might want to be careful if you do plant it. Um, it is a very vigorous plant, and it will kind of try to creep all over the place. 
and into places if you're not careful. Like if you want to plant it in a garden bed and don't care if it spreads all throughout that garden bed, then go for it. Um, but it is the most beautiful ground cover, I think. And I, it does have like these cute little pe blue periwinkle blooms. However, I've yet to see any of the periwinkle blooms. It didn't bloom this spring for me, but I do really love it. It's done exactly what I wanted it to do, which is uh, cover the ground like back there and over there. And the Burgundy Glow Ajuga is just looking spectacular. Um, this was one plant, this Burgundy Glow Ajuga. It's even trying to overtake the Burgundy Glow Ajuga, to be honest. Let's pull this out. I don't want you to do that. Okay. Um, but this was one plant and I separated it into three and planted them here just last year. The vines are trying to climb up through it too. Um, and now it's just kind of filling in this whole space. There was a hosta back here last year and the hosta did not come back. Um, these are these vines that are driving me crazy. Okay. But uh, that's why there's a space there because there was a hosta. And now I think it'll just, now that the hosta is gone, it will uh, fill in that area nicely. But I really love Burgundy Glow Ajuga just for the foliage alone. That beautiful purple, pink, uh, greens and creams. And it did flower. It's just out of flower now. You can see one of those is the old buds. And now it's kind of creeping over the stone. Oh, it's just gorgeous. So I love it. So right back here is my hydrangea. This is an endless summer hydrangea. This is the one that I have uh, planted in the ground. I have another one on my porch that I call Big Daddy that is 13 years old that is spectacular. But this one is going to be spectacular this year as well. It is full of blooms, maybe more full of blooms than I've ever seen this particular plant. And let's go take a look look at this huge bloom here so i just put out a video on how to grow and care for hydrangea macrophylla or big leaf mop head hydrangeas in very hot climates because i'm here to show you that it can be done our climates our summers are so 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 hot and um i get so many questions about my hydrangeas and how i i keep them looking so beautiful in the heat of the summer so please uh, check out that video if you can uh, it's going to be in the upper right hand corner there. All you have to do is click on it. But the other thing I wanted to show you is that I put soil acidifier in the soil and I'm, tr you know, I try to turn the blooms blue. It is difficult to do when it is planted in the ground because it is difficult to make our soil super acidic so that it can be blue blooms. But I am definitely getting partially pink, partially purple blooms and it is so beautiful i just absolutely love it just look at that wow and i have tons of buds on this guy it is just full this is a great year for um for endless summer hydrangeas or hydrangea macrophylla in general because we didn't have like the worst of winters although we had one really big cold snap that was about it the rest of the winter was pretty mild and then we have had a very wet spring very wet spring and i'll talk about that in a minute what that has done but what it has done with the endless summer hydrangeas is created tons of blooms look at that that one actually i would call that partially blue like that's borderline purple blue right there which is very cool so there is a bloom way back there that i wanted to show you but i can't get back there <laughs> look at that one. Oh, it's just full so let me back up just a little bit this is underneath my vitex tree it is just gorgeous i love this view so all right we are gonna take a little circle around so you can see the front border or the front garden uh one more time but i do have lots of things in containers on my porch and in the front that i'd love to show you so hang tight okay so right here is this you know square boxy area that many people do not know what to do with a lot of the homes around here anyway the builders somehow decided to put in these like square planters surrounded by concrete and so uh, i have finally figured out what does well here and that is this three-tier planter i was so fortunate to find this on facebook marketplace for ten dollars at the big what 
two seasons ago or the beginning of last season. I don't remember, but I have now figured out it used to be sold uh, at Walmart as Better Homes and Gardens three-tier planter. It is no longer sold, and I can't find them anywhere. I did find one on um, eBay, but I would be paying close to $150, including shipping, and I don't know if I want to do that. But it is beautiful, and it just really um, adds so much interest to uh, the front walkway to my garden. I just absolutely love it. So, uh, starting down below is Liriope and it is variegated Liriope and I just love it. It adds a beautiful texture down there. And I have some blue bonnets that I had purchased at Callaway's and so they are just coming out of bloom. This is another blue bonnet, but let's see. I feel like it has another bloom starting right there. Yeah, it does. Okay, so I'm not done with blue bonnets yet. And since I'm down here already, I will just talk about this bottom tier. Unfortunately, it's kind of coming out of bloom. And I did do an update video. Oh my gosh, there's a butterfly right there, y'all. Do you see it? He's just hanging out and he's literally inches away from me. Look how special. Hi, buddy. You are so pretty. So this is Super Bina. Um, I can't even talk. I can't even think right now because of this butterfly who's letting me be right next to him. <laughs> um, this is Super Bina Peachy Keen, y'all. And look at this one flower that is in bloom. It's absolutely beautiful. But this was covered in blooms a little bit ago. If you will watch my video on my update, I'll pop the link on the upper right-hand corner. I love it. He's just letting me look at him and film him it is so i love butterflies i absolutely love them hey hello look how sweet you are oh goodness how sweet is he okay i'm so sorry y'all but i just love butterflies and <laughs> it's just captivating to me okay Anyway, this is Super Bina Peachy Keen. It's coming out a bloom a little bit, but I do have a lot of new blooms beginning. It's doing really, really well. And then actually this is kind of a new planting. The reason is because I had Super Bells Yellow by Proven Winners, these, these up here. I also had those planted down here and down here. And all of a sudden, within a couple of days, they completely died on me. And the I, these are doing fine. Those down there died. I have no idea what happened. I really don't. I didn't see any bugs. It seemed as if it might have been root rot because the roots were not very good. But I actually noted that the roots were not good when I planted them. So maybe that's possible that it actually already had root rot or something wrong with the roots in the very beginning. But... What are you trying to do, mister? I wonder if you just came out. Look, he's like struggling to fly. I'll bet you're drying your wings. Wow, yeah, well just hang out. Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. Okay, anyway, so what I did is I got these two yellow uh, wave petunias at Walmart. It's, I wanted a really deep yellow like the Superbells yellow, but I just can't find anything like that. And so I just replaced it with yellow wave petunias. And then I have more Super Vina Peachy Keen back there. Again, kind of almost out of flower, but still absolutely gorgeous. On this second tier, oh my goodness, I have Super Tunia Persimmon. And it is doing really great. I did notice just today there's some spotting on the petals and I just think it's aging and I think it's rain as well. We have had so much rain. So these guys are pretty, you know, pretty moist, pretty wet right now. And we're supposed to get more rain tonight and tomorrow. This has just been a very, very wet spring. So it's going to be hard to keep some things alive that don't like to be wet, honestly. But we're going to we're going to trudge along. I have been fertilizing these guys. I've been trying to fertilize them once per week and I think that they're just doing really 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 well. Um let's get this over here. Look at that. Oh. It's just beautiful. It's exactly what I wanted for that second tier for sure. 
And then this third tier, again, is just a repeat of the Superbina Peachy Keen. Again, it's mostly out of bloom, but I do have some. It's absolutely spectacular and doing really, really well. And then I put some wave petunias up there as well. So yeah, it's kind of all out of bloom. But here's the wave petunias. Really teeny. I just planted them a couple days ago. So there they are. Okay, and so down here, I have some vines growing. So last year, I had these Confederate Star Jasmine vines growing, and you can see that they are growing up an espalier that I made last year. It didn't quite make it all the way. This is how far this, the, <laughs> um, the jasmine vine got last year. And then in our winters, these jasmine vines, they just die off. They're supposed to be evergreen in zone eight. They are not in my experience, not in here in North Texas. So it died down to the ground and the jasmine vine is coming back. So there's the jasmine vine that's kind of climbing up the old dead vine. But I have different vines this year. They're annual vines that I grew from seed. And this one is, it's not currently blooming, but it was. It's Blue Pickety Morning Glory. So you can see this is an older bloom, but it's already blooming. And then it's just growing its way up. And let me show you the other side. The other side right here. This vine is actually Black Eyed Susan vine. And it's a yellow and orange and peach mix. There's something eating it though, isn't there? Oh, goodness gracious. But it's still, it's actually doing really well and growing up the old jasmine vine as well. So hopefully... I'm calling this the year of the vine. <laughs> I hope to have all this just covered in vines and I'm honestly hoping to have it come up this way and meet halfway because I have more Morning Glory and Black Eyed Susan vine that are planted right here. So let me show you really quick. <gasps> Look at that anole. The wildlife is just insane. It's so awesome. <laughs> Say hi, buddy. Hello, you're on YouTube. Say hi to everybody. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> but anyway, I have Black Eyed Susan Vine and Morning Glory that are growing up this way. And if they make it, <laughs> look at him running away. If they make it, you see they're just kind of uh, coming up there. I'm going to make another espalier all the way up there. So that I will have vines growing this way and all the way up and meeting each other here. So my vision is to have this whole area with vines growing over our entrance. That's my vision. I hope it comes to life. That was my vision last year and I failed. <laughs> but hey, that's gardening, right? We fail sometimes and that's life. We fail sometimes, we learn from our mistakes and we pick up and we go back and, and try again. And and hopefully it works the next time. So here we are. This is uh, the famous Super Junior Vista bubblegum. I have two Super Junior Vista bubblegums growing here and they are doing fantastic. And I have a Super Junior Lovey Dovey down here. Again, I still have some pansies. And here is my Limelight Hydrangea that I have trained in standard form. So this year there's a lot more stems that I'm allowing because it's a little bit sturdier than it was last year. I might be allowing too many stems. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to find out if it turns out to be too much for this central stem to support, then I'll end up cutting some of them off. And of course, if, if it's in bloom, then I get to enjoy the blooms in like a container or vase or something. But um, I'm just, none of, no blooms yet, which is not surprising. They're not supposed to bloom until what? June, July, at least, we're at first of May. So there's my Limelight Standard Hydrangea. Coming up this way, I already showed you my vines that are growing, and then all throughout here are just impatient. It's absolutely beautiful. They're growing really, really, really well, and I love the white pot that they're in. It's just, oh, it's lovely. And over here, I have English ivy, and I had these last year, and now I'm training them up a bamboo trellis, and so those are doing really, really beautifully as well. And coming back 
there is my showpiece that is the treasure of my front garden this is big daddy i got him for mother's day in 2011 and so he is 13 years old and this is one of the most spectacular years for him um again i did a video so if you're curious on as to how i take care of this guy and keep him this glorious then please watch that video but uh, i have achieved blue blooms for sure and look at some of these oh my goodness look here's my hand here's the bloom it's massive it's glorious i just oh my gosh oh, love it love it love it love it lots and lots and lots of blooms this year i think i have probably 50 blooms on this guy not all of them active right now but um there's just blooms everywhere <laughs> and they're nice like um this one's even more purpley maybe a little bit pink these guys down here are definitely that blue color uh i have applied soil acidifier twice now i just applied soil acidifier a couple days ago to try and keep these guys to you know remaining blue but look look at that one little purple and with all of the blue oh my gosh it's just stunning i just love this plant it is my favorite plant hands down it's the showpiece plant of my garden i have many hydrangeas but this one is my favorite and right next to big daddy is my variegated lace cap hydrangea which is absolutely stunning as well I'm just a little bit frustrated because I've never seen it bloom. <laughs> it's never bloomed. It doesn't have a single bloom on it. It does have this beautiful variegated foliage though. And I love it simply for that. This is Big Daddy. So um, yeah, let's see. Yep, every bloom that you see is Big Daddy. And then where you don't see blooms, it's the variegated lace cap hydrangea same location same watering on irrigation same fertilizing same absolutely everything as big daddy and yet for two years i have not seen this guy bloom oh oh wow but it is beautiful uh so we'll just we'll just keep hoping for this guy um he, over here is another container this one has a beautiful gerber daisy gerbera daisy that was given to me by one of my little daycare girls i have a home daycare and her parents uh, she picked it out her parents graciously bought it for me and i just absolutely love it i do want to get more gerbera daisies for sure and it's under planted with impatience and then i have a black urn here that has three different things here we've got tricolor sweet potato vine which i absolutely love i overwintered this from last year i've got impatience and then i've got um double up pink begonia this is a plant that i overwintered uh last year as well and i split it into five plants <laughs> and um so this is one of them but it is not blooming for me however over here is one of the others and it's doing much much better right here it's in much more much more shade and it is blooming isn't that interesting more shade more blooms and i've got it planted up with a purple sweet potato vine so i think that's really pretty i've got my little bench there and then i wanted to show you really quickly this is my gomferina wreath that i have hanging there and it was much brighter pink <laughs> when I put it together. Uh, I saved it from my gonfrina plants uh, last year and I made this wreath over the winter time. And I will say that they, they do not save very well in the sun. So the sun hits this in morning time and it definitely fades. So that is something to think about. If you're thinking about making a gonfrina wreath, just know that if it's not in complete shade, that it's going to fade. But it is still remarkably beautiful and I still love it. Just wanted to let you all know and update you on the gonfrina wreath. Uh, plant it in the shade. Don't, don't let it have any sun exposure. Um, and really this is, oh, okay. This is one of my other porch planters. It has the English ivy again. It has dianthus in there. And then I have it crawling up a plant stand. And then I have put some Tradescantia zebrina in there. Um, I may plant a couple other things in there, but 
this is kind of I like it I like the idea of the plant stand being a um, a trellis for the the English ivy I really do like that okay so let me show you these guys these guys are my containers I called them curbside containers because they're planted at the curb and I also really wanted to show you our grass as well and let you know how we've gotten our grass to be so green but first let me update you on these curbside um, containers. I really, really would love for you guys to watch my video on uh, planting these up so that you see how much this has grown. Wow, it's amazing. And I don't know if you can see all of the bees, but the bees are all over this salvia. So the showpiece for this container, absolutely, hands down, is Mystic Spire's Blue Salvia. I've never grown this plant. I know Janie from Dig Plant Water Repeat has recommended it, um, and I am so glad I picked it up because it's stunning. <laughs> so beautiful and the bees are all over it i'm almost afraid to touch the the bloom because i don't want the bees to sting me <laughs> but you guys can see um just how vibrant purple blue and there's bees everywhere wow i'm not gonna hurt you bees okay they're just amazing i love 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 it and then here i have super Tunia vista bubble gum that is growing really really well in front here I have Super Tunia Lovey Dovey that's doing okay right here. Not too shabby. I have a Super Tunia Royal, what did, what did we call it? Magenta, yes. So Royal Magenta is, hmm, he's doing okay, not great. And then right over there, you see a blank spot, barely. There was Supertunia Priscilla planted there. And I called it, y'all. I called it. I knew the Supertunia Priscilla was not going to do well, was not going to keep up with the vigor of the Mystic Spires and all of the Supertunias, and I was right, and it died. And so did the other one in my other container. And then um, in the other container, one of my Royal Magentas died as well. I don't know. This has been a very, very wet spring. Maybe they got too wet. I don't know. Um maybe snails maybe slugs um these are all possibilities but look at this though <laughs> this is how vigorous the bubble gum is y'all so the bubble gum is planted on the other side and yet i've got it, the bubble gum growing through it's growing through the mystic spires and it's kind of showing its pretty face on this side too just and look there it is. <laughs> It's so great. I love Super Tunia Vista bubblegum. Y'all have got to grow it if you have never grown it before. But I'm going to quickly show you this planter as well. And yeah, you can see this is where the Super Tunia Royal Magenta was. It is no longer there. It died. And then right here was um, the Super Tunia Priscilla. What I have planted kind of in between where they were is we'll see how it does because i feel like it's already being swallowed this is another uh sparkling amethyst and again it's kind of coming out of bloom the superbenas do this a little bit um they bloom 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 and then they kind of come out of bloom until they flush back out but they flush back out pretty quickly so we'll see how the sparkling amethyst does <laughs> under there if the mystic spires doesn't swallow it up but yeah, this Mystic Spires is just as spectacular from all angles, bees all over it. And then of course, the Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum does not disappoint. It is just absolutely beautiful. And that's why I wasn't too concerned. I'm kind of training this guy to go over here, to be honest. Stay there. I could pin him in and you won't even, you can't even tell that there was a plant that used to be there because it fills in that gap. Plus the Mystic Spires is totally gonna overtake as well and i think the super tunias are just gonna be trailing down the container but goodness isn't that a absolute showstopper container i absolutely love them love 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 even though i had three plants that have died already <laughs> and uh it, it's okay it is what it is it's it's how things go but i'm just gonna get that view of my containers with my front garden look at that 
spectacular absolutely beautiful i am so happy with how things are turning out with my front garden already and oh i didn't want to end the video without talking about my lawn first um this is something my husband has worked really really hard on but it is palisades zoysia and it's you know when it first started coming back we had some weeds we pulled them manually and then what we did just two weekends ago we had it aerated we had a lawn uh company come in with an actual big aerator and they aerated the soil and then we fertilized it and then we put compost over it and literally within a week it was completely green it was just barely green before and now it is this deep shade of green that is absolutely lush and beautiful no weeds because the weeds can't even get through anymore because it's so big and thick and lush so i uh, absolutely love my husband for his care of the grass and of course the garden is spectacular as well it all complements each other well i thank you so very much for watching please hit that subscribe button i will be putting on monthly garden tours of both my front and my backyard as well as lots of other gardening videos uh, other garden tours coming as well that are not just my yard so please stay tuned for that very very soon and I love you all so much I'm so thankful for each and every one of you I hope you have a fantastic day everybody bye bye